What's going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today we're going to talk to you about Lucid. I want to go over some expectations for this upcoming week, what's going to cause some volatility, and go over everything else that you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So starting off with this upcoming week, bad timing, unfortunately, but you do have a lot of Fed speakers throughout the week, no true data points. So again, it's going to be largely a technical driven week. Aside from that, though, you also do have a lot of companies unveiling their earnings, more notably, Pound here, you have Robinhood, uh, Soundhound's a pretty popular one as well, but in my opinion, none of these is really kind of having the strength to move the broader market. So in reality, like I kind of already mentioned, it is going to be more of a technical driven week. Like, um, But there is a couple Fed speakers, so that might calm the broader market, but going into this upcoming week, you do see the Fear and Greed Index at 27. So regrettably, uh, starting off the week is might, there might be a valley rally, I could be wrong, but I think based on absolutely everything that's been coming out, there might be more of a rollover of this potential fear. And in case you guys do not know, there's just a lot of data coming out from big tech to kind of signal a slowing, a lot of data coming out from consumers. It's showing that the buying power is kind of diminishing, which in reality, the market is just now wanting rate cuts, not to because uh, they combat it against inflation, but rather to avoid a recession. So as of right now, uh, despite Powell recently saying that they're not even and weren't even considering a 50 basis point cut, you do see for the September meeting, there is a 22% likelihood of a 50 basis point cut, then a 78.0% uh, likelihood of a 25 basis point cut. I said that kind of weird, but so yeah, I think all in all it should be a very interesting week. And then of course, aside from that, you do have yours truly, the earnings after hours on the 5th. I'm going to be live streaming that, so kind of just stay tuned for that. There has been some changes. So over the last 90 days, there has been five negative and one positive revision. And some recent analysts did change their earnings per share. So it did go from negative roughly around 25.5 to now negative 27 cents. So people are assuming that Lucid is going to have burnt a little bit more cash, uh, maybe through R&D, especially with the gravity and stuff like that. And then aside from that, revenue. So even though people are bearish on earnings per share, people, um, meaning analysts, are a little bit more optimistic on their revenue. So it did go from roughly about 179 it was adjusted to 170 or 186 and now it is 192.65 million for the revenue so hopefully that comes in line the only negative about raising the bar is if lucid doesn't hit it then it's going to kind of portray it as a negative um, but then again going into lucid's earnings like i signaled Peter's been very active, many different interviews, and so I think he wouldn't have done that if they weren't really confident about their earnings. So hopefully they hit a home home run because definitely they can't play. They can't mess around at all because if there is that negative rollover in the market and Lucid has their earnings, this is where you do see a significant pullback. And plus the options are kind of signaling the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go over that in a second. Aside from that though, in uh, still kind of keeping in line with the Q2 earnings, you do have the top questions. So this is uh, sorted by the most shares. So first one, uh, actually to be honest, there hasn't been any change to the top three. Paul has kind of regained uh, all pole positions. So yeah, first one is for cost reduction. Second one is motor technology. This one actually has moved up. I believe this one was fourth last time. So I think that one is a very good question and very suited to Peter. So hopefully he will have a field day and just rant his heart content to this question. And then this question right here, ESS. I'm really pumped about this one. Uh, so Paul, thanks for asking that. Same with Nadim. I really like this question. So if and when will Lucid look uh, to expand into Europe and the UK and where will blah, blah, blah grow in uh, grow demand for the premium EVs. So I think all of these are very good questions. And even Savan, if I'm saying that right, 
his questions uh, kind of came out of left field. I don't think they were really top five last time, but uh, when will pre-orders open for the gravity? And this one is more for potential partnerships because keep in mind the last two earnings, um, I'll bring it up in maybe a video tomorrow or something like that. But in the transcripts, Peter does allude to multiple OEMs that's going to be for licensing. So I think a lot of people are assuming one is obviously high end day. Uh, second one could be maybe Ford. There has been some correlation of that in the past. So definitely something to keep in mind for Lucid specific uh, events. Uh, it doesn't look like they're doing anything next week. So next one is going to be August the 12th and that is going to be a rally to Monterey car week. So that one's definitely a very popular one. But aside from that, nothing this upcoming week. So let me know your thoughts on that. When it comes down to the broader market, as well as Lucid's earnings, if negative, you're going to see shorts just jump up and down with uh, happiness because shorts have been kind of returning quite a lot in anticipation in my opinion for lucid to have good earnings so if it comes out as negative anticipate them to really pounce on friday shorts did return about 335,000 shares and this is why i like to analyze this information because by shorts returning it kind of shows that sell-off on friday was somewhat unjustified. But then again, what do I know? I'm not a financial advisor. 26.62% of the free floats being shorted works out to be 235.73 million shares. Cost of our average is 13.99. You do see a lot of chatter despite the bloodbath in the market that as a byproduct of their Q2 earnings, people are saying that there is going to be a squeeze. So who knows, that could potentially happen. Based on the options, like I said in my dedicated video under my uh, Lucid channel, uh, Lucid dedicated channel, if you look at the delta, that's the likelihood of that exercising. And so ultimately for August and 9th, you do see kind of polar opposite. So based on the options, it does signal more of a bottom, roughly around $2.50, and then more so for a high looking, uh, I guess on the opposite, expect or opposite spectrum for the puts, roughly around $5. So if Lucid does have some good earnings and it kind of rallies to $5, then yeah, definitely things could get very, very real. Because like I've signaled in the past, Lucid is considered a risky stock for shorting purposes. So the margin required is pretty big and pretty large. So whoever is shorting Lucid does have deep pockets, but needless to say, if the stock runs up a good 40%, possibly even more in that one week, then this is where you could start to see some margin calls. But again, uh, that might be a little bit premature to talk on. Looking right here at the actual open interest though. So for this upcoming week, so August the 9th, you do see, uh, like I said, anywhere from roughly about $3 to about 5 550 anticipated so just anticipate a lot of volatility for the foreseeable future and based on this so the technicals let's talk on that because like i kind of alluded to next week aside from lucid's earnings it is going to be more of a technical driven week right now with it at three dollars and 12 cents it is trading between this s1 and the pivot so somewhat lagging the other evs but then again uh, lucid's i think a lot of people are doubtful on Lucid's earnings. I seem to be somewhat optimistic, so we'll just have to wait and see. But going into this upcoming week, $2.82 is going to be that next strong support. Very strong support because I'm looking at the one day chart and uh, moving for the resistance slash target, $3.48. So very wide gaps between all these points. So anticipate a hell of a lot of volatility. So based on the options, again, it's kind of signaling anywhere from the S2 to the R3. So a lot of volatility. So let me know your thoughts on Lucid and their upcoming earnings. Do you think that, for instance, uh, analysts raising the revenue is positive or do you think that potentially is making it more difficult for lucid to have a beat because i think this upcoming earnings analysts and just wall street is going to be very very fickle with everything and so i think the previous quarters lucid has had a pass when it comes to earnings per share and revenue and obviously them missing a lot of people just been paying attention to lucid's future guidance and basing their earnings to be a success or a fail based on that but with everything that's happening in the broader market i can see 
like Wall Street being very specific about everything. So once again, Lucid has to beat on earnings per share and also revenue. So the fact that earnings per share was going lower, so negative uh, from negative 25 to negative 27 cents, that is kind of good because it is lowering the bar. So Lucid hopefully can easily beat that. Revenue though, again, that might be a little bit more of a hurdle. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Throw your price prediction in the comments below where you see Lucid going. Do you think there's going to be more oriented towards the four, five dollar range, or do you think it's going to test 250 or heaven forbid, maybe two or even lower than that? What's your thoughts? Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Hopefully, everyone has a good weekend ahead of them. And with all that, appreciate all of you watching.